Hello, everybody! Welcome back to Crone's Magic Corner. I'm Rachel Arazo, your intuitive divination mentor. Let me make sure that we're live. Happy, happy Friday. Let's make sure we are in the correct place at the correct time. Scooch over a tad. And I hope everyone has been good. I have lots of announcements today, so I'm super excited about this. Come on, computer. What's going on? I see a person. Hello. Let me know that you can see and hear me okay. And computer crashed. Hi, Kimberly. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to pull up. It's officially retrograde season, guys. <laughs> Welcome to the full moon in Aquarius lunar eclipse as well. And we've got five retrogrades happening right now. We everybody keeps saying six, but it's not six until in a couple <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Um because we have Mars, Pluto, Saturn, um, Neptune and Mercury right now. We're missing one. So we only have five right now. Let me see. That's right. Okay. I have my notes. Yay. So, if we open up the group, <laughs> now we can have the comments where I want them. So, hello, everybody's coming in, yay! <laughs> Let me know how you're doing, how you are dealing with this eclipse period right now. <laughs> I know personally, uh, technology has been off of whack all morning. Um... Definitely feeling that Mars retrograde. <laughs> so it's it's been rough right now, but I am I am looking forward to the transition being over because change doesn't happen unless you're uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, hello again, Lauren. Hi, Nicole. I have sound. Yes, I have sound. Cool. Cool. There we go. <laughs> and today. We're also going to, I'm going to give you four actionable steps, not just for precise tarot readings, but to seriously revamp literally everything um, about your practice. And this stems across all kinds of different readings. This goes across for um, tarot, palmistry, um, I Ching, bones, oracle cards, whatever system you use. You want these four things. And it's going to be amazing. Hi, Jessica. Lauren says, I'm extremely emotional but feeling creative. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the need to clean. <laughs> I feel the need to express myself. I've been doing morning pages. Um, those of you who know Michelle in this group, she's wonderful. She's in the Academy. She has been running a book club where we are reading The Artist's Way the artist's way. So I have been doing the morning pages and I have been enjoying that immensely. Um, I got new stuff. Oh, what is on here? Something stickies on my water bottle. Um, I got new notebook. <laughs> I was crossed between this one and a watercolor one that said it's just a phase and a moon on it. But I like this one because it actually has the constellations and such. So I got a new notebook that I have been breaking into this week and I have been in study mode. I should put my cards away. <laughs> Everything is all spread out. Yeah, um, let me tag Michelle. You just need a copy of The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Let me tag Michelle and she, sh she can give you more details. Michelle! There we go. She shall see it later. <laughs> it's fun, it's here on Facebook, it's free. I love it so much and it forces you to take care of yourself as an artist. I love it. 
Yeah, so, um, a couple of things. First off, you may have noticed I disappeared <laughs> for the past week. And that is because I needed to recoup. Um, I put so much into this group, I put so much into the academy, that I really needed to sit down with myself and really take care of me. Okay? Because I put so much awesome content out there for all of you that I needed to take some time for myself. So, I was not present in this group. Um, on starting Monday though, you will see more things pop up. I have also been busy running the Heal Your Chakras in 7 Weeks live group program that is going swimmingly. We just finished up the Sacral Chakra Week. Um, and then tomorrow, those that cashed in on the um, fast track bonuses will be doing the Kundalini activation with me and Susie tomorrow. And it'll be wonderful. <laughs> That's one way to wake up your sacral chakra. Um, we also, I just got done doing a live in the other group where we were talking about... Um, our weekly client reading. We've been doing practice readings for everybody that needs to break out of their shell and actually go out and do some client readings. So they experienced that. We had a particularly um, interesting client this week <laughs> that I'm still giggly about. I love it so much um, that everybody got to experiment with. So it's been a lot of fun and a lot of work. So, um, but I did miss everyone here. What has everyone been up to this week? Let me know how you've been doing. Mm. And then I'm real after everyone um, lets me know how they're doing, what their plans are. Um, I'm going to be breaking into the four things that you really need for any kind of reading today and a special announcement for some amazing programs that I'm going to be doing for the next few months into 2019. Nobody had anything fun? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> so, when it comes to readings, I notice the biggest problem, well, one of the biggest problems that people have is not knowing what to ask <laughs> and I've talked about how to ask the right questions before um but in this case we really want to get down to there's a very simple method that when someone comes to you for a reading or when you go to yourself for a reading and you pull out your cards there's something that you're missing and it can easily be broken down into four quick little categories and once you master figuring out what is missing from your reading, you know how to find it. And then you know how to intuitively ask the right question and get the guidance that you need. And then you also know how to really um, build up your self-confidence when you learn how to put these into different categories. Wonderful. Maria, good. I'm excited for change. Yes, I'm excited for the change too. <laughs> Jessica, I'm vibrating hard, looking forward to moving through this current shift and diving back head, back into reading. Good! I'm glad. We're going to throw you right in the deep end. We're going to get you right in there. <laughs> so, these four categories, okay? I learned this, um, and I teach all of my intuitive tarot students, those that are in the academy, those that coach with me for their tarot reading, I specifically teach them these things <laughs> because when you break it down like this, it makes any reading a breeze. And especially when we open up to other modalities, it helps you span yourself across all kinds of different areas. And it helps you get right to the heart of the problem. And then clients are like, oh my God, you figured out what I needed to figure out. What in the world? <laughs> and it's so much easier. Okay. So got my head scarf all kinds of funky whatever so first off we need to figure out what your objective is why do you want the reading <laughs> what are you trying to accomplish okay and this is a simple what these are these are simple acting techniques anytime we open up a script anytime we step on stage for the first time as a character um, if we don't know these four things then we're lost and that's how we get a very angry director <laughs> and then we don't know what to do 
So first off, what is your objective? Okay, so what do you want? This is usually an unconscious desire, um, but sometimes it's very plain and simple. Like, I want to be in a relationship with that specific person, or I want to get that job so I can have financial security. Okay, that's your objective. Okay, and if you are missing the objective, you're lost. You're like, I don't know what I want. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> And we do have multiple objectives throughout our day, throughout our life, and they accomplish many tasks. So right now my objective is to give you this value and to talk to you and to make sure that you understand this content very clearly. Okay? And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I, my objective will then be to answer it the best that I can. <laughs> um, and then after this, my objective will be to go get some lunch. You know, your objectives change based on what you want to do. And again, sometimes can, these can be unconscious. We don't know the true objective because we have not done the introspection to ask ourselves the objective. So, if you're feeling a little lost right now with the retrograde period and a little off balance, then you might be missing your objective, okay? And then once an objective is completed, when it comes to our life, once we accomplish the goal, we get the thing done, we move on to the next one. We are a never-ending source of objectives. For those of you that are very interested in the law of attraction, you can see this as your desires. Once you fulfill a desire, you move on to the next desire and then contrast comes in to make that desire stronger and then we accomplish it and it keeps on going. Does that make sense? You're okay, Kelly. I'm glad you could make it. Kimberly says, sorry, I got distracted. This week's been uppity downy <laughs> with energy a bit all over the place. We have family coming for a visit today through Sunday and trip to the county fair on Sunday too. That's awesome. I hope you have a very fun weekend. Hope you have a very, very fun weekend. Hi, Heidi. I see you. I see you. <laughs> so does objective make sense? Because when it comes to a reading, if you are just acting and doing whatever willy-nilly, or let's say if you have a business and you're just acting willy-nilly, or you go into a group and you're just like, I feel like doing readings for somebody, but I don't know what to do to start. Like, you understand the action you want to take, but maybe not the reason you want to do it. Maybe you want practice. Maybe you want to get some clients. Cool. Then, then you would figure out your objective. Can't really. Yes, I think that makes so much sense. Awesome. Yeah, and it really does when you sum it down like that. So next, we figured out what you want, right? You want to be an amazing tarot reader. <laughs> you want to be an amazing psychic, okay? You want to be tuned in, tapped in, turned on. We have your objective. Now we need the action to do. You got to get there. And if you know what you want and you don't know how to get there, then you're missing the action, okay? And you have to identify your steps to get it. So this can be both inner and outer movement. This can be literally me staring at someone from across the stage and walking over there. I want to be closer to that person and understand them emotionally. I might want to literally be next to them and touch them so they have emotional support. I am both doing an inner action, my yearning to be near them, and an outer action of moving towards them. Okay? If you want a job... Your action then is to go out and get interviews or to call up places that you have already uh, put in applications and say, hey, I'm just checking on my interview. You're doing an action. Now, sometimes if we do an action, it'll make things worse. <laughs> so what do we as spiritual folk do? We light a candle or we make a sigil or we meditate on it. You are still doing an action. Okay, we have the object, we want to send energy towards it, so we push energy that way, okay? And when you have your, op when you have your objective, and then you have your action, you've got momentum going, you've got things moving, and you have, you're moving towards accomplishing your goal. Jessica says, I find that with no intention, there's no responsibility taken for the results, and it's an exchange. Exactly. Yeah, if we don't 
have a clear purpose for something and we're just moving willy-nilly it's like the eight of wands moving in all kinds of directions you need to straighten all those wands and put them toward one goal instead of spreading your energy out hi kimberly hi caitlin yeah and then then your action is more purposeful then it's actually flowing in the correct way then things are moving the way that they should be you know also when we express intent for something or we identify that we need something that can kind of be a psychophysical action kind of like i was talking about how i need to connect with this person i might move across the room and go sit next to them or i don't like this person i don't like their vibe i'm not gonna associate with them so you might find yourself slowly meandering across the room to get away from them okay there's a bit of a psychological thing behind it it's that same thing with um that show lie to me how he would notice people's physical bodily reactions based off of what they were mentally thinking about okay you when you are interested in someone and you're not in a relationship and you're just sitting there you're flirting you'll naturally turn your body to them your legs will cross in their direction um you'll find that you quarter turn towards them and look them in the eye to show that they have your full attention if you want to completely ignore something you'll do the complete opposite you'll turn the opposite way or you'll put your purse in your lap or your your briefcase in your lap or you might sit on your phone to show that you are putting up a wall okay um or literally if you're in a conversation with someone and they're open-armed that's an action showing that i am open to talking to you whereas if i cross my arms i have put up a wall in between the two of us with my body okay makes sense Nonverbals are very important very okay the third thing now that we've started talking about the actions and how we can literally put up an obstacle between something obstacles are what's also important you can have as much momentum as you want towards something you can have as much drive and as much focus as you want towards a specific goal but if you have an obstacle in the way then you're not moving anywhere and typically the first three are what people use for a tarot spread they use what do i want how do i get there what's the obstacle in my way and then they leave it there then they think that that's enough but it's really not we'll get into the fourth thing in a second because obstacles can be people they can literally be a physical limitation or it can be a mental block so if you believe that you don't deserve something if you don't believe that you deserve to be a great reader or I'm never going to get this reading thing and be psychic or I don't know about calling myself a psychic because I have negative connotations with that word. Okay, you got an obstacle in your way. You're never going to tap into your intuition in the way that you want to because you've put up a block for yourself. Or I physically can't do a reading for you right now because I don't have my cards. That's an obstacle. That's a physical obstacle. You need your cards with you. Okay? Or people um, you might want to be an amazing reader but you might be afraid of your family disapproving or your spouse or a partner not supporting you or um, you might have toddlers who will tear up your cards if you pull them out <laughs> or whatever it is those are obstacles things that are keeping you from doing the action to accomplish your goal okay and like I said usually people leave it at those three so give me a heart or a like if you have stopped and just done those three like you've done a reading over what do i need to do how do i do it and what is the obstacle because i've done it myself too and i used to leave it there but then i discovered that that's not a good idea yeah couple people yeah and and there's no shame in that a lot of people do that and a lot of basic taro spreads just stick with that they just stick with focusing on those three things but there's an important factor that is missing from your reading that you aren't including that can remove the obstacle completely that can make you feel like an amazing reader that can take you to the next level 
And if you miss it, then it's completely gone, you know? So that last thing is what we make fun of actors for. What is my motivation? It's really called an inner image, okay? A lot of the times for a reading, this is what is missing from the reader's point of view. If you are used to go to, going to a fair or working on the hotlines or doing readings for your friends and family and they don't want to tell you the real reason they want to do something, okay? This is the inner image, okay? It's their motivation. They want to keep this to themselves and then they think you're an amazing psychic if you can figure out the real motivation behind something. Or they get mad at you for calling them out about it. <laughs> okay? So what your motivation is, what your inner image is, is what keeps you going. Okay? You can want to, um, you can want to be a psychic. Okay? You can take all the courses and read all the books and buy all the decks and buy all the crystals. Okay? And you can, um, you know, move past your own blocks, but if you're just doing it just to do it, that's not going to fulfill anything, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to do it as a hobby, it's still some kind of fulfillment. It brings you joy. It brings you happiness. It does something for you, and that is your motivation, okay? And this goes for literally everything in your life. Why do you want that relationship? Well, because I don't want to die alone. Okay, that's your motivation. If you have an inner fear of being alone for the rest of your life, then that is going to spur you into action. And maybe the obstacle is you can't find anybody in your area or you're online and you're just getting creepers. Okay, <laughs> whatever it is, you found your obstacle, but your fear of being alone is going to drive you to find somebody and to find that happiness more than the obstacle will keep you away from it, okay? And a lot of the times, readers are missing that inner motivation. Why do I want to do this? And if you can't figure out why you want to do this, what your beliefs are, what if someone had to sit in your shoes for a day, a week, a month, years on, and be you they would need to know your motivation. If you can't figure that out for yourself, then finding any kind of satisfaction in your readings or satisfaction of being a reader for other people and healing other people is going to be very hard. And it's going to get very resentful very quickly. And it's going to be difficult to be happy. And we've talked about this before, knowing your natural energy. If you are at least in a neutral spot or you're happy and you're laughing and you're feeling confident, you're in a high vibe state. Those of you that know your motivation, it's easier for you to get into a high vibe state than somebody that isn't, that doesn't know why they wanna do this because then you beat up on yourself. You get mad at yourself for not being the reader you wanna be, but you can't figure out why. You, you need some fire under your butt, you know? You need something to keep you going. Okay. Does that make sense? Because when, and then if we take these and we break them down into a reading, it, this could easily be a four card reading. Okay. What do I want? How do I get it? What's my obstacle and what's my motivation? What's going to wake me up in the morning and zing me like a bunch of caffeine and keep me going towards this goal? That could easily be a four card spread. And that's all you need. Or that could easily be a four rune spread. Or you throw the bones. Or you um, ask your tea leaves. Okay, what is my motivation here? Show me what I want, how I can get it, and the motivation behind it. And there you go. And that's good to set you for a while. Because tea leaves, that that's a long-term reading. <laughs> you know? And the biggest thing with finding your motivation is relaxing okay and this is really hard especially if we have obstacles so let's say you want to be an amazing reader you want to be tuned in tapped in turned on you want to know your energy and your body to the point of 
when you know something's wrong, you can easily go get help. Or you can give the guidance that you want to give for other people and it fulfills your life, you know? The important part is relaxing. If we're constantly tense and we're afraid we're going to give the wrong answer, it's so much harder, you know? Hi, Michelle. Jessica says, I find clarifying cards are very helpful in identifying root motivation unspoken. Okay, that's a very good point. And I have a bit of a problem with clarifying cards because of that. Okay. Because if you know how to ask yourself the right questions and you can practice getting to the heart of a reading, you shouldn't need clarifying cards. You shouldn't need to look at the bottom of your deck to look at the shadow card. You shouldn't need to even pull a signifier card in order to have it represent someone in a reading. And there's, there's a reason why I say that. If we have somebody in a reading that says, I want a boyfriend. If, no matter who they are, a boy or a girl, I want a boyfriend. I want to be with somebody. I want to know if I put on my lucky shirt and my lucky underwear, if I walk down Main Street and Fifth, and a red balloon passes by that I will meet my soulmate and they will be with me forever. Okay. There's a problem with that. This client is being way too specific, but there's something about their motivation that is making them be that specific, okay? They want something to happen the way that they want it to. So what does that tell me? Just from that question, before I even answer them, they have a little bit of problem with control. They don't focus on what is going to nurture the other person. They want to focus on nurturing themselves. And they've probably been hurt so many times that they feel they need to be very strict about the kind of love that goes into their life. So if their soulmate walks down the street with a red balloon, they know that that's them because that is the condition that they have set. However, they need to reassess why do they actually want it? Do they want to be in a relationship with somebody that's that controlled? A lot of the time, the answer is no. Okay? All they're really afraid of is if I don't give these specific conditions, that I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. Whereas if I were to just pull a card about, okay, what do they want? They obviously want a relationship. How do they want it? Okay, they want it in a very specific action kind of way. What is the obstacle? I could just leave it there. And I would be confused because they're asking me, will it happen? And the cards aren't telling me if it'll happen or not. They're just stating what the client's already said. Then I feel the need to pull a clarifying card. Or two. Or ten. Or twenty. And then all of a sudden I have the entire deck out and I am so confused. Um, instead... We learn context clues. Like, did anybody in elementary school sit down and look at a sentence and the teacher tell you how to find context clues to figure out what a word means? This is very similar, okay? We look at the surrounding images on the cards, what is in the same symbolism for the cards. We look at literally the clues that the client is telling you, okay? This person is afraid of being alone. They just really want to know, am I going to be with somebody or am I going to be by myself? And if I set it up so that I must meet somebody, is it going to work out? The answer there would be a no, because you're trying to force something, you know? Heidi says, are clarifying cards the ones you draw to explain the primary card? Clarifying cards are when you pull the spread completely, no matter what number of uh, cards it is and then you don't understand the cards meaning in a certain position so let's say you pull a Celtic cross and you don't understand the outcome you might pull a clarification card out of the remaining cards you have in your deck to figure out why it means that way you know like why is this the outcome can you give me some more details on why this would happen that would be a clarification card or um if you just want more detail about why one of the cards showed up, you would shuffle the remaining cards that you have and then pull a clarifying card. 
And the problem with that is if you don't understand the clarifying card, you're going to keep pulling clarifying cards. And then there's, we've talked about this with tarot spreads, how if you have 15 people sitting at a table and they're all talking at the same time, you're not going to understand the conversation. You're going to get lost. Same thing with tarot spreads. If you only have a couple of cards and you can learn how to intuitively read all of them and see the similarities and find out why they're there and ask yourself, why did I pick this question and figure it out? Then you're, those clarifying cards aren't going to be needed, you know? Jessica says, I see what you mean. It's often a hopping card that sets the theme for the reading. It can, yeah. It's an intuitive draw for me. Maybe I'm using confusing terminology. Yeah, sometimes if you're just, you just want to intuitively pull a card, then you're just pulling a card. Then it's just an intuitive draw. Yeah, when I think of clarifying cards, I'm thinking of, if I don't understand this, I need the deck to continue talking to me. And a lot of the times, especially beginners, that know the keywords and know what, know what they mean, but um, don't quite understand how they can work for different spreads and what they can mean overall and change their meaning depending on the cards, it can be very confusing. Hence why I don't like using them. And I don't like teaching people to use them. I would rather you sit there and journal it out and be like, okay, why does this not make sense for me? It's like... It's like if someone knows that they're pulling cards for an abusive relationship and then um, they pull the lovers and it's upright. And then they're confused. They're like, but the lovers are supposed to be a good card. Let me pull a clarifying card and figure out why. When really, if they think about it in a different way, the lovers a lot of the time can be very emotionally manipulative and very clingy, you know? They're not thinking of the card in a different kind of perspective. Yeah. I'm glad that you asked that so then we could clear it up. So, when it comes to doing a reading of any kind, as long as you know those four things, you're good, you know? Then you can tell the client what is missing, okay? If someone comes to you and says, I am, I'm going to keep using love here because nine out of ten times when you do a reading for someone else, it's a love question. So, I'm looking for a partner and I don't know why I can't find one. Okay, so they know what they want, they're doing the action, they have the motivation a little bit, they're just missing what the obstacle is. They're trying to figure out what the obstacle is. Now you can do a reading and get right to the point and tell them what the obstacle is and make it really easy for them, you know? Or, and if, let's say we do this with a different modality. Let's do this with palm reading. Okay, so I want children... So I'm talking to my partner about it, but a lot of the times they don't want, they don't want to do anything. Okay. Cause sometimes it can get personal like that. So I'd look at their hand. I'd see that they have the potential for kids from children lines, but then I look and I see that they're not very, um, giving when it comes to love. Cause depending on where your heart line ends up, that will determine how giving you are in a relationship and how much you like to take in a relationship. So if they're not very giving, that tells me they're not satisfying their partner very much and then their partner doesn't want to do anything. So that's why their partner doesn't probably doesn't want kids because it's just, it becomes a chore, okay? So then I would tell them, okay, you are missing the appropriate action here. You're focused so much on your own motivation that you're missing, well, you're focused on a specific outcome here so you're missing the reason why you actually want the kids and you need to adjust your action because it's gone and straight off on the path, okay? And so instead, why don't we remind ourselves, I want kids because I want a big happy family. I have this idea of the big happy family. Okay, there's your motivation. So, so start thinking of it in that way. Don't make it like a chore, okay? And this could work for all kinds of different modalities, okay? So, the biggest thing here is when you find what is lacking from these four things and what is missing, then you can start taking steps to be the kind of reader that you want to be. Or you can help this person 
fulfill the life that they want and then you're the healer that they need if you are doing readings for other people you know does anybody have questions on this concept because I've done this I don't know how many times I do this on the hotlines <laughs> I've and when I teach this to other people that's when all of a sudden the readings start clicking then it's easier to figure out what's going on in a situation that's how we get the wonderful equal energy exchange going back and forth and because it's no fun sitting down and doing a reading for somebody that is really closed off and doesn't want to talk to you about anything. But when you have a basis for these principles and you can tell them, I know what you want, I know what you need to do, but there's an obstacle here. Why don't you help me figure this out? It makes it so much easier <laughs> and it flows so much more. Yes, absolutely. So you need your objective, what you want. You need your action. So what you got to do, you need the obstacle. So what's in your way? And then you need your motivation. Why do you want to do it? And a lot of the times the fourth one is the one that's hardest to figure out. This is why we do the shadow work <laughs> and we beat up on ourselves and we really dig deep when really a lot of the time we don't have to dig that deep at all. It's very basic and like I said you could easily make that a spread and that can help you with any situation Heidi says this is clicking so much thank you you're very welcome yeah and I figured this is a wonderful thing to talk about because one thing that I love to do is to help everyone figure out their intuitive blocks especially for readers because we rely so much on helping other people in their lives that we get clogged up ourselves and if we're not tuned in tapped and turned on and we're not happy with what we want and it's not fun and easy it's so much harder to do readings <laughs> so much harder objective ap action obstacle motivation yes on point kimberly <laughs> On point. So, I also wanted to let everybody know that um, besides just this, this is a concept that I'm going to be bringing into my three month coaching packages. Now, a few of you may have noticed that the, earlier this morning I sent out emails to a couple of you. Um, those of you that have been showing up and doing the workshops and been doing the challenges and helping other people in the group and just really going above and beyond with making sure that you are growing into the reader that you want to be and you're investing the time in yourself and the work in yourself. So I went ahead and reached out to those that I thought would be wonderful to coach with me. Now. For those of you that I didn't reach out to, you are more than welcome to chat with me to see if actually working with me and talking with me would be a good fit for you. Because it's a lot, it's a lot easier to actually see if someone can help you by hopping on the phone with them or hopping on Zoom and talking to them one on one because then you can actually see if they can help you with your situation you know so like I have a couple of clients that have some really big sacral chakra and root chakra blocks which for those that weren't here for the intuitive not the intuitive but the um, introduction to chakras workshop we talked about how if you're not stable in your base and you have a lot of fear built up in you it's a lot harder to access your upper levels, right? It's a lot harder to access your intuition and to notice your psychic triggers and to give yourself the best guidance possible and other people. So I have a lot of clients that have a hard time with that. So I sit down and I make a personal coaching package with them, okay? Um, over specifically those issues. I have a couple people that are running off of this four tip system that I'm giving you right here that I'm working with them on to help revamp themselves as a reader. They can't figure out what obstacles are in their way. So we sit down and we figure it out. We give them journaling prompts. 
We give them workbooks and personalized meditations and we sit down and we talk about it one on one. So, because again, I want everybody to be tuned in, tapped in, turned on. I want everybody to have a really wonderful life and to be the diviner that you were born to be and the psychic that I know you are. So if you're interested in this, I'd love for you to set up a chat with me and we're going to discover what's going on with you. We'll sit down, figure out your goals and give you some steps on how you can act on them, whether you decide to work with me or not. And we'll see if you're a good fit for me. And the reason also that I am extending these invitations, not just for coaching, is because I'm coming out with a couple of other live group programs that are not associated with the Academy, starting end of this year and next year. And one of them is a 12-month program. It's huge. And it's amazing. And those of you who really love my theater stuff are really going to love it. <laughs> and I'm not going to give too many things right now, but it's... Um, it's really fantastic and it's preparing you to actually work one-on-one -on -one with clients. So, well, not just clients, not in the business type of sense, but preparing that confidence, getting rid of that fear of being wrong, asking the right questions, everything like that, and then actually experiencing doing readings for other people. So, and it's all, of course, theater-based because me and my degree <laughs> and um it's going to be wonderful there's going to be monthly um masterminds with everybody chatting together there's going to be um one-on-one -on -one co sessions with me you can talk to me unlimited over facebook messenger and voxer it's going to be huge so i want to see who here wants to commit to doing that and if that is a good fit for you so i'm extending the invitation i will pop a link for those that want to chat with me one-on-one -on -one. we will pick a time that's best for you it's a link to my calendar Beep. let me grab it Make sure it's all good. Blop. There we go. Just popped it into the chat. So, those of you that actually want to sit down and talk with me, feel free. I'm filling up my book with talking with people. So, and I really want to see if some of you are fit for this program. We have almost 400 people in here. Ah! It's amazing. <laughs> so, I'm gifting these sessions out, okay? Does anybody have any questions before I hop off? It's been a really good session today. And I love questions. Don't be afraid to ask me questions. Lauren says I need to sit down with my planner and figure out when this would be best for me. That's okay. Let me know. There's no time limit on talking with me. You can come talk with me at any time. Anybody looking up at comments? We all good? Give me hearts or thumbs ups if you're all good. Then I will release you. And I will see everybody that wants that will be with us, um, with me and Susie tomorrow in the Moon Sister Circle for the Kundalini activation and the healing session that we have prepared for the full moon in Aquarius eclipse which is intense I'm looking forward to it I need some healing it's gonna be wonderful awesome everybody's good yes happy full moon please work on your self-care try out this method try out the four tips and pop them in the Facebook group make a new thread and let me know how it goes if you have a spread that you have issues with let us know and let us work it out with you so have an awesome rest of your day. Happy full moon, everyone.